Hey, sweetie. I was just wondering what you were planning to make for dinner tonight. I think that we'll need to grab food today. Carter finishes practice in about 45 minutes, and Alice is working on a school project for about another hour. I won't be off work for about another 30 minutes, so I'm thinking takeout tonight. You know how hard we're trying to be healthier. Why would you even suggest that? I don't have time to make food, and we don't have any leftovers that everyone will eat. Maybe you need to start cutting back your work hours so you can properly take care of the house and family. It would make more sense for you to cut back, since I make almost three times more than you. You are the wife, so that kind of thing should be on you. I mean, you already take care of so much of that. We are not having this conversation now. If anyone is cutting back, it will be you. I'm already doing a lot to help you guys with the diet you want to be on. If you want to take over meals, go for it. But you've always taken care of the meals. And you said that when you went on the diet, you would do more. Currently, you are failing to live up to your part of the agreement. And since you've rejected my idea for dinner, I'm going to let this one be all yours. But I just left work. I need some downtime after working so hard. The rest of us are still busy. You're the only one with time. Fine. I'll go grab something for people before going home. Will you be able to make it up to me? Yes, I can give you more time with your children. Since you're already out of work, you can pick them up while getting the food. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get the food, you get my kids. Your kids? Don't you mean our kids? Well, technically, they aren't yours. You never did adopt them. That's because you said you wanted to wait until they were old enough to choose to be adopted. I've been raising them since they were two and four. Notice they haven't chosen you yet. You should probably reflect on that. The fact that you put your work before family is something you should think about. Now, I'm gonna get dinner and hope that you start to reflect on your choices. Don't worry, I will. Good. Talk to you later. Hey, Hazel. I need a ride to school tomorrow. Also, I need to bring two dozen cupcakes for a class. Okay. We can swing by the store on the way tomorrow. Ew. I don't want store-bought junk. You know that we're trying to eat better. How can you even suggest that? We don't have enough supplies at home to make that many cupcakes. And considering you're busy until 10, I don't know how you'll have time to make anything. You should make it. I mean, you used to be more than happy to help with this kind of thing. When you were seven years old, you couldn't do it yourself. Now you're old enough to drive and will be an adult next year. Oh, so you just want me to eat a bunch of junk? You don't have to eat any of the cupcakes tomorrow. Between work and running, you and Carter to different activities, and making dinner? I don't have time to go to the store tonight. So if you need cupcakes by tomorrow, it's store-bought or nothing. I can't believe you're being so petty. No, I'm being firm. You didn't used to have a problem with that. Fine, I'll ask Dad. Don't wonder why I cut you out of my life after leaving. Why would you say that? Because you've been acting like the devil stepmother our entire lives. I'm so sick of acting like everything is okay. It isn't. We hate you. And I'm very glad that you lost your baby a few years ago. You would make a horrible mother. Did you just... You can't have meant that. Oh, I absolutely do. My dad really dodged a bullet by not being permanently tied to you. This year you can forget about any of us celebrating you. You aren't our mother and you never will be. Do you really mean that? I do. And Carter feels the same way. So you guys don't see me as your mother? Not in the least. Okay, fine. I won't act like your mother anymore. And don't worry, I'm gonna show your father these messages. That way he's not surprised when I don't try to engage as a mother anymore. Oh, he'll be more than fine with it. I hope so. Good riddance. I just texted with your kids. Apparently neither of them see me as their mother. I know, remember? I told you a while ago. 
I'm sorry I didn't realize just how bad it was. We seem to have such a great relationship. I don't know what happened. You can't force these kinds of relationships. If my kids reject you, then they reject you. It's only the last couple of years since this started. Before that, I, I thought that they... <sighs> Never mind. If they don't want me to be their mother, I won't force it. Thank you. You should have just accepted that from the start. It's like you're trying to erase their mother. That upsets them and their grandparents. I never tried to erase their mother. We still have pictures of her around our house. We celebrated her birthday for more than a decade. You were the one who refused to celebrate what would have been her 40th birthday. That really hurt her kids and her parents. That alone upset everyone. I had to work. And it's not like Carter even remembers her. He was only a toddler. Besides, birthdays are for celebrating the living. See just how insensitive you are. We wanted to celebrate the life she had. She was important to all of us. We also celebrate her on Mother's Day. And your anniversary with her. Of course. None of that should upset you. It does, since they stopped doing anything for me on Mother's Day. You aren't their mother. Why would they celebrate you? Uh, fine. I hear you loud and clear. I am not their mother. So I won't try anymore. That would be for the best. Just remember that you said that. Did you really just leave for work? Without making anyone breakfast? Yep. If you have an important meeting, you should have told me. Or better yet, you should have gotten up earlier to make breakfast. I got up plenty early enough to make my breakfast. Since it included foods not in your family's diet, there was no reason to make extra. Then you should have made something else for us. Why? Because that's your job. My job is running my company. You know what I mean. You're supposed to cook for everyone. I would cook for my kids if I had any. But I don't. So, there's no reason for me to do that now. What? Are you really going to be that petty? Gotta go, my client's calling. Have a good day. Wait, Hazel, we need to talk about this. I told you yesterday that I needed to go to school early. Now I'm late. And where are the cupcakes you were supposed to make? Oh, hey, Allie. From now on, when you need something, you need to talk to your parent. What? But you're supposed to take care of that stuff. Why would I bother Dad about it? I'm not your mother, so why would I do anything like that for you? Because you always have? Yeah, that is done now. Anyway, I don't have time to talk. See what your dad can do, and don't contact me when you need something. What is wrong with you? You have a responsibility to us. No, I don't. See what you said to me yesterday? I'm just doing what you wanted. I'm not going to act like your mother anymore. I meant I don't want a relationship with you. You're still responsible for the same stuff that you've always done. Grow up, kid. Your entitlement is showing. Now go focus on getting stuff done and stop badgering me. But I expected you to do that stuff from yesterday. You have a father and grandparents. Hit them up for help. You're horrible. You're a monster. You're the evil stepmother and i'm blocking you now going forward you'll need to ask your dad for stuff you wouldn't dare why are you trying to ruin the lives of my children carter said that you didn't remind him about a project and ali didn't have a ride to her practice today when we married you agreed to do that kind of stuff for them yeah we had a lot of agreements when we married since you failed to keep up most of your end of the agreements, and your kids are thankless brats, I don't see any reason to keep up mine. I mean, I'm not their mother, so how can any of you expect me to do the tasks of a mother? Because you always have. That's true. But since you guys have made it clear I'm not part of the family, I'm not going to do all the extra work. There's nothing in it for me. You're living in my house, so you will do what I tell you to do. Is that really the way you want to talk to me? I'm still your wife. Right. You're the wife. So you should be doing what I say. Uh, 
We aren't having this argument. I have work to do today, since I have more time to grow my business. You need to start talking to your kids about what they need for classes and activities. Fine. I'll take care of my kids. Just don't be surprised if I end up divorcing you. Hey, if that's where we're heading, I'm not gonna stop you. Are you serious? Because I'm not serious. I just... I can't believe you would leave me to be a single dad. Your kids are teens. All the hard work is done, so it should be easy. It's mostly just coordinating now. If you're gonna be petty, don't play down what I have to do. Because if it were that easy, you would still be doing it. It's not particularly hard, but it is a lot of time. Good luck. I'm getting back to work now. You'll need to handle your own dinner, because I'm not taking care of yours. That's fine. Have fun. Don't patronize me. What is this I hear about you refusing to take care of my daughter's children? Probably just that. I'm not their mother. And they don't want me to be their mother. So I'm not acting like their mother. Of course they don't want you to be their mother. They already have one. But you still have a responsibility to them. After all, you've been taking care of them for 13 years. They expect you to keep doing your job. I am doing my job. And now that I don't have to tend to those brats, I have plenty of time to focus on what matters to me. <gasps> How dare you! Those brats, as you call them, are my grandchildren. And I won't have you talking so terribly about them. As far as I'm concerned, they're just my husband's kids. That means I owe them nothing. And if they act like brats, then I'm gonna call them out for it. I'm gonna call CPS on you. <laughs> Go for it. I'll show them how you've been undermining me for years. How you helped to alienate them from me, despite the fact that I was the one raising them. You've been trying to erase my daughter from their lives. No, I've been trying to set up boundaries because they've been treating me worse over the past few years. If CPS were to come and talk to us, I would be just fine with that. You called them brats. That is something that will get the government to kick you out of my son-in-law's house. I would be fine with that. Still got the house I bought before marrying him. I'll just move back there. And I'll stop paying for the bills, the cars, the birthday presents, all presents, and the mortgage. I mean, none of the stuff in that place is mine anyway. Not the house, the furniture, or the kids. Why, you wretched little beast! Why would you leave my precious son-in-law and grandchildren in a lurch? Just because you feel excluded? Well, you guys have all let me know that I'm not a part of the family. I don't know why I should care if I don't waste any more money on people who aren't family. You are horrible! Hey, I'm not planning on going anywhere. But if you want to threaten me with CPS or legal action, I have no problem taking my money elsewhere. I mean, I've always wanted to travel, and raising kids that don't care about me has wasted a lot of my time. We're going to have a family meeting to see how we can get rid of you. We're gonna take you to the cleaners! <laughs> Good luck with that. Did you know what your kids were planning? Did my kids plan something? I mean, I'm so busy being a father, I can't be aware of everything. They messed with the inside of my car. I got into an accident. Oh no. I guess that's gonna mess with your busy schedule. If you were taking care of them, like you should be, they wouldn't have had time to do anything to you. Are you serious? I'm in the hospital because of them. Wait, what? Why? Are you being melodramatic? Because I can't believe you got hurt that badly. My arm and a couple of ribs are broken. What? Oh, I get it. This is a prank. You're trying to make me feel guilty. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. So you did know about it? They were asking how they could prank you, and I said they could mess with your car. Now you're just trying to get back at us. Oh, I haven't started to get even. You and your children are menaces. And you're a horrible wife. And an even worse mother. 
Allie was right. It's best that you didn't have any children. That poor kid would have been miserable. Are you serious right now? You're saying that to me? Right now, while I'm in the hospital bed? Because of a prank you and your brats pulled? Oh, I'm gonna have a field day with this divorce. Stop being so sensitive. This is what you get for trying to change the family dynamic. You guys aren't my family. As soon as I'm out of surgery and recovered enough, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Lawyer? What lawyer? <laughs> I'm calling your bluff. You won't do anything. Because nothing actually happened to you. Who are the men you sent to my house? My movers. Nothing in this house is yours. So what are they supposed to take? The air? <laughs> Stop with this nonsense and come home. I can't leave the hospital until I'm discharged. Oh, you're still playing that game. Just stop. I don't feel guilty, and my kids were actually saying how much nicer it is without you here. Good. Let's make that permanent. As long as you keep paying for stuff, then I think that is probably for the best. <laughs> Are you really that much of an idiot? I'm gonna prorate my end of the bills. And since I've been paying for the mortgage for the last six months, I'm not going to give you anything. Technically, you owe me for that. But I'm willing to ignore that for now. You can't be serious. I can't afford this place on my own. Sounds like your problem, Blake. We're married. You can't just ditch your responsibilities. You owe your family more than that. Ahem. <clears throat> I don't have a family. All I have is an ingrate of a husband who has used me for years until his kids were pretty much grown. And since your kids never wanted me to adopt them, I won't owe you anything for their care. Hit their grandparents up. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help with their grandkids. I can't ask them for money. You know that. They nearly destroyed me before I met you. They tried to control everything. I was on the verge of going no contact with them when my wife died. Oh, is that why you married me? Easy target who wanted a family and had money to help? <laughs> I feel like such a fool. You are my wife, so you have to do what I say. Don't worry, I'm gonna fix that up as soon as legally possible. What's that supposed to mean? I'll contact you when everything's ready. Until then, leave me alone. You're my wife. I'm not gonna leave you alone. You come home right now. Moron, I'm in the hospital and I haven't been discharged yet. If that were true, you would have asked me to come see you. Why would I ask you to visit me in the hospital when you're part of the reason I'm here? My doctor just returned, so I have more important things to do than worry about you and your kids. I'm not done talking to you. Hazel, talk to me. What is going on? I have no idea, Martha. I'm done with anyone related to you. Blake just called to say that he and my grandkids are getting arrested. Yeah, there should also be divorce papers, although that's a different court. My lawyer said that Blake had the papers a few days ago, but I never heard back on that one. Blake burned them. Now you're trying to bully him into signing for the divorce on your terms, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, you poor, pathetic old woman. The police arrested him and his kids because they sabotaged my car. I was seriously injured, so I believe they're being hit with grievous bodily harm. What? There's no way that would happen. They did no such thing. The cameras on the house and in my car say differently. It was an easy case for the cops. You have to drop the charges. No, I don't. And even if I did, the other driver and his 10-year-old got hurt when I hit their car. There's no chance he's going to drop his charges. You have to do something! I'm doing everything I can. Besides getting divorces and pressing charges, I'm looking into what else I can do. That's not what I mean! My grandbabies can't have a record! Their mother would never have been so cruel! Well, as you guys have made it clear, they were never mine. I love them like my own, but even I have limits. But on the plus side, you can get your two little jail birdies out. They're young, so I'm sure the system will go lighter on them. 
And that will give you grounds to get custody. Blake is looking at some real time for what he did. How can you make my grandbabies criminals? We will never forgive you. I won't lose any more sleep over it. Have a nice life, Martha. My words did sow the seeds, and just like I predicted, Blake ended up getting three years for his role. His daughter was charged as an adult since she was the one who cut my car brakes. They did go lighter on her, but she won't be returning to high school since she'll be in jail for prom and graduation. Carter mostly got community service, and then ended up with his maternal grandparents. If he thought jail was bad, he learned just how much worse it was growing up with his controlling grandparents. Prison guards have nothing on them. When Allie finally got out, she ended up living with her grandparents for a few months. Apparently, living with them wasn't what she wanted at all. Without me as a common enemy, they were a lot tougher on her. She moved in with her boyfriend, and last I heard, she was pregnant. The divorce went through while Blake was in jail. The only reason he kept the house was because Martha and her husband bought it. Looks like he'll be under their thumb for the rest of his life. He'll be paying for my medical bills and therapy for a very long time. Something that will be much harder since no one is going to want to hire a convict with his history. After that disastrous marriage, I focused on work. And when I least expected it, I found the love of my life. He's a detective. The one who helped on my case. He's really sweet, and we're talking about marriage. I still want kids, but for now I'm enjoying getting to know him. That was my big mistake from my first marriage. And for now, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs>